my name is Rita Rosenbach, if you don't know me already, and I am the author, author of the book Bringing Up a Bilingual Child. I'm also the founder of multilingualparenting.com, the website where you can find more than 300 uh, posts and then several Q and A's on raising bilingual children. And I'm the founder of this Facebook page, and we also have a group which you're welcome to join. Sorry if this is your, already your second attempt to listen to me um, to this week. I had to cancel Wednesday's one since uh, I had a very persistent cough. I hope it will stay at bay uh, now, now today. So today I have three questions which have been sent in in advance. They are from Tertia, Sarah and Gilda. And I will, uh, I will also ask if there are any additional comments, um, questions in the comments. I'll also try to uh, answer those to the best of my ability. So Tersia has got a son who is uh, about two and a half years old. They have recently moved to the UK from South Africa. And um, up until a year ago, the primary language was, was Afrikaans, since they were living in South Africa. And, um, and they continue speaking Afrikaans at home uh, and with friends and family where possible uh, while living in the UK. Their son has started um, going to Childminder about half a year ago. And um, as I said, he's about two and a half years old. And Tosha writes, Aiden does not speak Afrikaans or English. He will say word for papa, mama, and thank you. So mom and dad and thank you and nothing else. And um, Tersia also mentions that at uh, his two-year development check, um, concerns were raised that he was not speaking as yet. And Tessie writes, I'm worried that he's not speaking because he's confused. He understands both languages and follows instructions. Should I be worried? Thank you for your question, Tessie. Uh, first of all, uh, let me just address the confused bit. Bilingualism does not cons cause confusion. So that is not the reason. It may take him a bit, uh, bit longer to figure things out but it's um, speaking two languages is not the reason why he's not not speaking um, this has been um, proven in in several researches so so please do put that um, away from your mind it's not because of confusion uh, due to speaking two languages or listening hearing two languages in his environment that is not the reason um, keep in mind you have just just moved or oh, his whole world has changed from his familiar surroundings in south africa to a new place in the uk in addition he has also started started um, um, going to a childminder and uh, yet another big change in in his life um, so all, all these reasons can be can be um causing your son maybe not to, not to, not to speak as much so so what i'm just saying here that take all the different aspects into consideration uh, you ask should i be worried my experience is when a parent asks me should i be worried then the parent is already worried and uh, my my philosophy is if there if there is worry then try to remove that worry and so don't think about should i ask a specialist or should i not ask a specialist just go for it ask ask to see especially if if this was raised during the development check then um ask go to your gp here in the uk ask for a, a referral to a speech and language therapist and point out that you want the therapist to be um, used to dealing with bilingual children and uh, in interview try to arrange so you can speak to the speech therapist maybe on the phone before you go to meet them so you can um, 
be sure that it's the right kind of uh, professional for you. I, uh, after this uh, session, I will add some links, links to the comments. Um, <clears throat> And Mary Pat O'Malley has written a couple of great articles on my site and there are also uh, helpful articles on her own site. So I link to both of those where you can you can look up um, like a normal speech development for, for a toddler or two year old, what to take into consideration and what how to prepare yourself if you need to go to a, a speech and language therapist and, and all these things. So I'll, I'll add those links afterwards. So arrange uh, to have an appointment. Uh, the sooner you go to the GP, the better, because a, a referral might, might take several months some, in, in, in some areas. However, there are also private ones that you can get quicker to, and if you are interested in those, then I can, I send, um, you can contact me and I will send you a link from how you can find them. And the next question is from Sarah. She is uh, pregnant, congratulations. And uh, she and her husband are from different countries. They live in both, they, they live in, in Lisbon in Portugal. Um, he uh, is originally from Namibia and um, his mother tongue is, Af mother tongues are Afrikaans and English. She was born Sarah herself was born in and raised in France, so is bilingual in French and Portuguese. So Sarah says, I would like to speak in French to our baby and my husband in English. And then Sarah says, though I wish he would speak in Afrikaans. Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you there, Sarah. It would be great if you, your husband would speak Afrikaans because uh, English is so much easier to pick up later on, while it will be much more difficult for your child to pick up Afrikaans if it doesn't happen from the very start. But of course, this is a decision your husband has to has to make and agree on, and we, we can't make that decision on his behalf. And Sarah goes on to ask, if my husband were to change his mind and speak Afrikaans only, um, and Sarah would be speaking French. Should we speak in English to the baby when the three of us are together? So Sarah and her husband are speaking English together. Uh, no, I would continue speaking Portuguese and, Portuguese and Afrikaans, if those are the languages you choose with your baby, and not to switch to English with the baby. Uh, keep in mind that you are in a situation where there are several several languages competing for the exposure time and it's highly likely that you will be the only or abs the absolute um, biggest source of, of um, French exposure and uh, there is prob there are probably not that many other opportunities on you on, unless you find the play groups and, and so on so it's important that you get used to always speaking French with your with your baby. The same goes with your husband. Um, Afrikaans, there will be even less exposure to, so it's very important that he always sticks to Afrikaans. I understand that this will then um, occasionally mean that you do not uh, understand what the other one is saying to the baby. And this um, is something you need to discuss in advance and, and be comfortable with. And um, agree that if ever there's a situation where you feel, oh, I'm, I'm feeling excluded now, I don't understand anything what's going on here, then you should say that. And then the other one should be happy to, to translate to make sure that everybody feels included. Languages should not divide families. But these are things you need to discuss in advance because um, I have come across many families where, where uh, since these things have not been brought to the table um, in um, before families have started with a uh, with, um, language strategy, then um, there has been some underlying resentment if a child learns one language before the other and then the other pa pa parent thinks, well, now they're not 
including me at all. So just being aware of this and speaking about it and, and speaking out, um, you're all in this together and, and both of you need each other's help. So you need to support each other if you want your child to learn as many languages as possible. And it's important that you agree. Um, it's difficult to, to move uh, forward with the family language strategy if parents don't agree between themselves. Um, so that's, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. If you have any further questions sorry about that, just uh, add them in the comments later. If you're not able to watch live, now I, will, I will catch up on those. And then the last question for day, today is from Gilda. She would like to have feedback on her family language plan. I like that you're using, that you are creating a family language plan. It's so important to plan ahead because you, if you don't know uh, where you're going, you have no way of getting there. Good, good on you. So Gilda is a native Italian and she's grown up in Italy, but since she went to an American school from kindergarten all, all the way through high school, she's got a, a a native level fluency in English and her husband however is Italian um, and these are Gilda's word with a very Italian background and knows no word of English um, and then she said OPOL one parent one language seems to me to be the best fitting plan for us dad speaking Italian and me speaking English um, yes, uh, I would agree. Uh, if you want to have two languages, then you are the one who will have to speak English. But Gilda is concerned about him not understanding me as well. I, I touched upon this before, um, especially in a situation like this. If he does, if if he really doesn't understand any English, then then it is extremely important that you discuss this with him in advance um, explain to him why it is important that you speak as much um, English as possible in, in all, the, all the scenarios because since you are um, living in Italy Italian will very quickly become your child's strongest language with um, with all the media, all the rest of the family, everything, the community, everything in Italian. Unless, of course, you decide to put uh, your child in an English speaking um, kindergarten or school later on. Because if you do that, then the situation changes. So it, it all depends on, on what you decide to do later on. But the, be it how it is, the, the most important thing is that you and your husband are clear about what you want um, for your child. You want him or her to, to be bilingual. And then for that to happen, there needs to be enough English exposure. If you are the only English exposure that uh, your baby will have, or at least the couple of first years, then it is very important that you stick to English and then translate to your husband whenever he feels that, oh, um, whenever he wants to, or you feel that it's necessary. I would think, because initially when you when we speak with children, it's very simple, it's repetitive, it's the same, it's the same words again and again. And uh, usually the other parent who doesn't know the language book and does pick up things, it's uh, very much about to do, sorry, It's um, very much to do with attitude. So if the other parent has got an open attitude to the, the other language and wants to learn, then they can learn. And um, so trying to approach this subject with your husband, would he be open to learning a little bit of English? Um, Possibly. I myself, I, I I didn't really think about this. I myself picked up a passive understanding of Punjabi while, while the father of my daughters uh, uh, spoke Punjabi to them. That was a, a, a language which was completely alien to me before that. Uh, 
did I become fluent in it? No, of course not. Was I able to, and can I still follow uh, normal discussions um, that they hold in, in, the, in the language? Yes, I can. So, but for, first and foremost, discuss with your husband and agree what you want to do. Um, and then, Gilda, you're also asking, um, am I really going to be able to, to speak English during Sunday dinners with the whole family? Well, um, that is, that, that's something that you will have to decide. Where, when you are there in the situation, you will under, understand it. Uh, what I would recommend that you do, that you explain to the whole family, not so after discussing it with your husband and agreeing about what you're going to do then discuss or explain to the whole family what your plan is i know families can have their own opinions but you need to that's why i say that discuss it with your husband first uh, agree and then just present your family that this is how we're doing it and there might be questions there might be uh grand grandma saying well what about if, if baby only learns english and all of these things and that those questions can come you just have to stand your ground and stick to the plan that you've done that you've made together and uh, if you feel that you can't just stick to english then you can do both you can say it in english first um, to your child turn around and say the same thing in English. Uh, my um, guess is they'll soon get bored and they, they won't expect you to translate everything. But of course, you will be the best judge of that in that uh, every, every situation. So, so, and I'm fine. And um, would, it, uh, would it harm if you were to decide that you're going to speak Italian? Um, not with your child when, when the rest of the family is there. Not as such. It's not that your child won't get confused if you switch between, sometimes switch to to Italian with her. It's more about the exposure time and, and the routine. The routine for you to always speak English with, with your child. So that's why. But look at the situation, see, see what works, but most of all, agree with your husband, decide what you do, and then stick to it. So those were the questions I, I had for today. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I will have another, there will be another uh, live Q&A in, yeah, well, it will be less than two, two weeks now on, in the, on the Thursday in two weeks. And I wish you all the best and thank you for listening. Bye.